Okay, so if like me, you put the Intech deck into a one-up pin, you'll have very quickly realized um, it really just isn't an enjoyable playing experience and you'll want to put it back to stock. However, it doesn't come with instructions on how to put it back. So I thought I'd do a quick video and uh, show you how I get on. Here goes. So the concept is pretty straightforward really. Here is a one-up pinball not modified. And here is the one-up pinball with all of the bits in it for the Intec deck. So the concept is I'll remove the parts that came with the Intec deck and then figure out if I can replace the parts in the same way that they're installed in the Star Wars pinball. I can't think of a better way to do it. So uh, let's figure out, let's plug some cables in, remove some bits and pieces, and we'll show you if it works. Now on the face of it, it doesn't look like there's that many bits. This was taken out of the one up. This is the new PCB. There's a metal case which goes in the middle, and there's a couple of cables inside it's been so long since i did this but this big ribbon cable here is essentially from the control deck so this little thing here all of these wires have to go back into the original buttons on the front of the one up pin and then obviously we've got to take out i guess what was the video card or whatever goes in there and replace it with the pcb so on the face of it, not too difficult, but I recommend you take your time if you're doing this. Keep referring back to a reference system, hopefully you've got one, and see if you can figure it out. So the first bit is pretty simple here. Just rooted all of the buttons from the front and the flippers identically to what we had over in the Star Wars one. And the next bit is to replace this piece here with the original one out of the one up. I've got no idea where those wires would go into it. So I'm just gonna take off the casing off my Star Wars and check it out. So just to show you what that looks like, fairly straightforward once you've got something to compare to. So we're just gonna pop this one back in and wire it up the same. So I think that's pretty much as it should be now. Take note, this is the original cable that I just had set aside on the Final Fight cabinet earlier. That's gone back in here. This cable, the multicolored one, came with the Intec deck, so that's gonna be discarded. Um, and this will go back into the original PCB. Now, of course, when you're doing anything like this, the fear is that you break the one that's working trying to fix the one that's not. So before we go any further, I'm just gonna see if this still works now. I've put everything back as it should be. For anyone who's got one of these, this little spinning thing when you boot them on is always a problematic moment, a worrying moment, because if it's gonna have a blue screen problem as many of these has had, it normally happens during that time. But looks like we're good to go here. No problems. And there we go. Yep, so I didn't break the Star Wars. Um, that's back and working. Now all that's left to do on our attack from Mars here is to pop the new PCB in the back there. All right, so the ribbon cable from the front here into the PCB, all the other cables back into the PCB as they were. A lot of people say to decase the PCB completely I think that's probably a good idea in terms of stopping it from overheating. I was a bit conscious of where to put it though, so I just opened the sides on the PCB just to let a little bit more airflow through it. Obviously the fact it's on the back of the screen doesn't really help. Um, I might take it off and see if I can just mount that somewhere else a little bit better, but I just wanted to put it back relatively stock in the right position check it all works and I'll plan the next step. But anyway, now for the moment of truth. Let's power this baby up. All right, now for the moment of truth. Ah. 
absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, obviously put something in the wrong place. Let's have a look in the back and see if I can figure it out. Right, made a change. Let's try again. We have power this time. That is a good start. We have a spinny thing. That's also a good start. Nothing spinning on the DMD though. Oh, there we have it. And there we go. Lovely. Fantastic. And I'll just show you in case you're doing this yourselves. That was my mistake. That um, power cable would come unseated when I put the metal case on. Um, anyway, we do some final checks. Put it all back together and I'll remind you of the gameplay of this awesome product at this price point. Alright, so let's remind you what this baby plays like. Yes, it has a lower resolution as compared to the At Games. But the flippers work, it's responsive, it's got bumpers, it's interactive. The DMD works now that we've got rid of the crappy Intech deck. Let's give it a whirl. Obviously, gonna go with a tap from Mars. Looking forward to getting this on the At Games, of course. But in the meantime, let's have a go here. All right, so that was enough gameplay just for this short video. Um, hopefully, if you got the Intech deck and you wanna reverse it, you will find this video useful. Um, if not, I'm sorry. Um, but for me, it's a bit like the Game Boy versus the Atari Lynx versus the Game Gear, right? The Game Boy was so basic, the resolution was crap. It wasn't color, but it just played well. And after playing the at games for a bit, I wanted to get back to playing the tap from Mars and some of the other Zen tables here, which is why I've gone to the hassle tonight of putting in the original PCB. So many fun games on here. They all play well. There's no lag. Just have some fun. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of thing, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Happy gaming.